A five-judge bench of the Supreme Court has brought in a big reform in a major constitutional body, that is the Election Commission of India. The court said that a high-power committee con consisting of the Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha and the Chief Justice of India must pick the Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioners for the Election Commission. What is the current system for appointments to the Election Commission and how does this judgment radically change this process? I'll tell you in this episode of KYC or Know Your Constitution. Now first, let me begin by telling you how this issue actually reached the Supreme Court. Basically, a PR was filed in 2015 by Anoop Baranwal, challenging the constitutional validity of the practice of the centre appointing members of the Election Commission. Seeing merit in the questions raised in the PIL, a two-judge bench of the Supreme Court referred the case to a larger bench in October 2018. A five-judge constitution bench then began hearing the case in September last year and this is the case in which the judgment has now been uh, released and pronounced. Now let's understand what the constitution says on appointments to the election commission. Actually, the constitution doesn't say much. Article 324 of the constitution talks about the powers of the election commission as well as its composition. So it says that the election commission will have a chief election commissioner and any number of election commissioners so that the president may decide. So the number of election commissioners is left to the president. This article also says that the president will appoint the chief election commissioners and other members subject to any law made by the parliament. This phrase, law, subject to any law made by the parliament, is extremely important, so hold on to that. Now, the current process is that the law minister suggests a pool of suitable candidates to the prime minister for consideration. The president makes the appointment on the advice of the PM and the council of ministers after this. Currently, EC is a three-member body with one chief election commissioner and two election commissioners. So the major issue that was raised before the Supreme Court now was that there's no law made by the parliament on the appointment of members to the election commission. So the court must step in to fill this constitutional vacuum, which is why I asked you to hold on to that phrase, because that is what became extremely important in this judgment. In response to this petition, the center had asserted that the court must respect the principle of separation of powers between different organs of the state and should refrain from interfering with the selection process of the EC members under Article 324. However, the court, the first thing what it did was it brushed aside the Modi government's stiff opposition to its intervention in laying down the new procedure uh, by essentially saying that it was a myth that the judiciary cannot make a law. The court said that while it is not open to the legislature to don the robes of a judge and arrogate to itself the judicial function, courts can make law and that it would not amount to transgression of the separation of powers principle. So that was the first hurdle that the court set aside. Now the Supreme Court has stepped in to declare that the president will appoint the chief election commissioner and the election commissioners and it says that the president will make the appointment on the basis of advice given by a committee of Prime Minister of India, Leader of Opposition in the Lok Sabha and the Chief Justice of India. It said that this procedure will continue till the parliament actually comes up with a law on the subject. This basically means that the parliament can undo the effect of the judgment by bringing in a law on this subject. The new process though is very similar to the one that chooses the director of the CBI, Central Bureau of Investigation. Now, in its judgment, it's a long over 300 page judgment and the court extensively looked at constitutional assembly debates to arrive at the verdict. It noted that during the debates, the words subject to the provisions of any law made uh, in that behalf by parliament in article 324 were added deliberately after discussions. And looking at this, the court therefore concluded uh, that, and I quote, Founding fathers clearly contemplated and intended that parliament would step in and provide norms which would then govern the appointment to such a uniquely important post as the post of chief election commissioner and the election commissioners." Unquote. The court also looked at other articles in the constitution that used the word subject to any law to, uh, to be made by the parliament. This included provisions related to the powers of the Supreme Court and High Court, establishing the SCST uh, and backward classes commissions, etc. It then noted that wherever such a phrase has been used by the constitution, a law has been made by the parliament. However, there is no law on the appointment of election commissioners even 70 years after independence. So the court said that the law had not been made despite various noises and voices made on the issue and the founding fathers contemplating it. 
So it asserted that absence of such a law does create a void or a vacuum, which then it went on to fill. Now, there were two more other related issues before the Supreme Court as well. Let me just tell you about them briefly. One was whether election commissioners should be given uh, the same level of protection as the chief election commissioner. This was with regard to their removal process. So as per Article 324, the chief election commissioner can be removed from this post only through a process similar to removal of a judge, which is basically through a majority in both houses of the parliament on grounds of proven incapacity or misbehavior. However, on this point, the Supreme Court now ruled that election commissioners don't have the same protection for their removal. Uh, the second parallel issue was a smaller issue, but it was regarding the funding of the EC. The petitioners had demanded that there should be an independent secretariat to the Election Commission of India and that its expenditure must be charged on the Consolidated Fund of India on the lines of the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha Secretariat. However, the court left this uh, to the government to bring in changes on this funding aspect. So it didn't really comment or rule anything on this. That's all I have for you for now. This is Apoorva Mandhani for The Print. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.